Hello everyone and welcome to a new video, I'm Sim Mora here and today we're gonna talk about 5 tips that will make you much better in the neutral when playing Street Fighter 6. The game throws a lot at you, right? Uh, from this range, for example, you have to worry about dash ups, you have to worry about jumps, you have to worry about drive rush, you have to worry about drive impact, moves that are really fast and you kinda need to parry like a Honda headbutt, butt slam, etc. Uh, obviously this is perfect parry and this is proving to be vital, uh, so your timing needs to be on point. And unfortunately this is where the first tip will come in. Pretty much you need to check out the options menu and check out the graphics settings. There is this input delay reduction item, currently it's turned to on. You can change change it in training mode uh, but you can in the main menu and what this does is that it will make the game more responsive right your moves will come out faster and this is obviously good this will help you react to everything I just said but it will come at the cost of the game having screen tearing this is if you're running at 60 Hertz and I believe that is the default uh, if you're on PS4 I don't think you have this option at all but if you're on next gen or PC you do and to avoid this you pretty much need to use a high refresh rate monitor like 120 this will take care of the screen tearing and you will have the reduced input delay unfortunately i know some of you might think well this is kind of annoying i want my game to look great and i don't have a high refresh rate monitor and i do agree with it uh, i don't have like a high refresh rate tv for my ps5 but the thing is if you're in diamond master etc 99% of your opponents will be running it and you don't want to be the guy with higher input delay because this will put you at a severe disadvantage. I know it's not something that everyone loves to hear or talk about but I figured I have to be honest and tell you guys about it because this will actually make a lot of difference in everything when it comes to this game. Alright, so let's now actually talk about the game itself and the first thing I want to discuss is auto spaced with punishes or spacing traps, right? I am pretty much setting up a specific sequence so that when Kami tries to take back her turn, she will get punished. Mura, I don't get what you mean, please show me. Well, check this out. I'm gonna do three crouching light punches with Luke into Sam Blaster. And as you note here, Kami will actually hit me with her standing heavy kick. She's taking back her turn because I'm negative after the Sam Blaster. That's okay. Now, check out what I'm gonna do now. Right? After that sequence, I did back heavy bunch and uh, Luke kinda reels backwards when he's doing his heavy back heavy bunch. So he uh, gets out of the way and then punishes Kami. You can also do something like his like heavy flash knuckle because it does sort of the same effect. A lot of character got options like these. Now let's say for example Kami didn't do the heavy kick and instead did her medium. I don't get a punish, right? But when she does this medium kick, she is putting herself in a position where she does get punished with my standing medium punch. So this is kind of like matchup specifics and this is something that pro players do all the time. They know these specific sequences, they know that from this range the Kami is likely to press so now I will do my back heavy punch or reel back. Uh, I noticed Otani in particular is very good at this with Luke but uh, yeah this is something that most characters have in some capacity or another. Another sequence for example you can do is a crouching light bunch, light kick, light bunch and after these three light strings I can do my standing medium kick. Right? Kami here tries to walk back. Again she gets whiff punished and if I go for like a heavy bunch I can get like an even bigger uh, whiff punish against her but obviously it's kind of unlikely she will do that maybe a heavy kick is uh, more uh, realistic but that still does get whiff punished right so this is the sequence uh, it's not as I want to say deceptive as a sand blaster one but it's still a viable option and uh, if you happen for example to go for a medium bunch instead of the medium kick you will totally be in range and you can't really do much here right except go for something that reels you backward like his heavy flash knuckle carries some risks obviously but this is good right if you know that your opponent will try to do that this is a decent whiff punish everyone in the roster can do this to some capacity so check out your character explore and this is a big part of matchups and knowing how to deal with the other characters
So moving over to Drive Rush because this is the key mechanic of this game and your success in it will highly correlate with how good you are at applying it and how good you're at defending against it. Here I will set the dummy Kami to do a Drive Rush into Standing Heavy Bunch, right? This is very common obviously and you might be saying well Mura, I mean this is kinda easy, she's doing it from a far range, uh, just hit her outfit and you're right. But check this out, if I'm a little bit early, I can actually get punish counter. I will set Kami to do the same thing here, but I will delay my button just a little bit and I get counter hit. The idea here, what I'm trying to say is that there is a lot of variance to drive rush, right? Because obviously the opponent can also do like dash up into jab, a lot of Ken players love doing that, as they can dash up into medium kick, dash up heavy, etc, etc, etc. There isn't like the one button, one timing to shake all drive rushes. And what you need to know about drive rush is the distance you're playing from will highly change how you're supposed to deal with it. From this range, if I'm setting Kami to do both timings, this is almost a complete mix. Right? Sometimes I will stop her, sometimes I will get counter hit or like punish countered. Uh, you can't really deal with it that consistently. But if I'm up close, up close, let me see, maybe like someone like here, uh, this is a little bit closer. Now it's actually much easier because I just see the green, I press my crouchy medium. Because at this range, Kami have to do like the 11 frame startup or so of the parry and then do the drive rush. So it's kind of a slow move for this range. And because of this, reacting becomes much easier. I'm just pressing my crouching medium punch as soon as I see the green, right? And this is what Kakiru is doing in the grand finals of Gamer 8. He played at a closer range. And that made it more difficult for Angry Bird to do Drive Rush. And that's why Angry Bird started doing Dragon Latch Kick. And then he got parried, etc, etc. You have probably seen it. But obviously this range is kind of difficult. Uh, because now you have to play at this uncomfortable range. And not every character has a game plan to play from this range. But a character like Ken, Kami, etc. are very good at it. And that's why they are very strong characters. Think about it for a second, right? But what if I'm playing from further range? What if my character wanna play from a further range? Let's say for example, look here, I wanna play from this distance. Well, you have to find long moves that are somewhat active and have decently fast startup. For look here, my standing medium kick, this is probably the best answer, right? This is the one where I see the green, I press the button and it will kinda work because the move have long range. The startup is 7 frames, so decently fast, and it's a decently active move, so there's a good chance that I will stop the drive rush, but obviously this comes at the cost of me not being able to kinda convert out of it into anything. From this range, I check it, I drive rush into my own, and uh, I get like big damage combos, right? With a standing medium kick, I don't get anything, but I get to stop it consistently. So what I'm trying to say is there isn't like the one button to stop drive rush. You have to think about the range where you're at. If you're at a closer range like this one, drive rush becomes less of an issue. It's easier to actually check. Longer range, it somewhat becomes a mix, at least as of right now. Uh, but that is unless you want to throw out your pokes, something like a Kami or a Luke standing medium kicks. Uh, these become really good at checking drive rush from these ranges. And this is what you need to do on defense. On offense, well, kind of reverse it. If you notice that the opponent is playing from a close range like that, uh, maybe get at a further range and then start applying your drive rush. Mix up drive rush into like throw, drive rush into really fast button, uh, drive rush into a delayed button from range because they might try to check you. Mix it up. Mixing it up is what makes it harder for your opponent to deal with. Alright, so the final tip kind of have to do with fireballs and how you can deal with them. This is important because a lot of the top tiers have fireballs in this game and knowing how to deal with them can actually be very beneficial for you. Now, the basic information everyone knows is that it's kind of bad to block fireballs in this game because you lose a uh, drive gauge when blocking. Uh, a better option is to parry, right? Now, a lesser known fact is that there is more pushback. You get pushed back more 
uh, when you block. So for example here, notice Manon's feet is on the line. Uh, after blocking a fireball, she get moved backwards around like four tiny squares. But if I'm at the same range and I'm parrying, she moved back around one square. So if the opponent is zoning you, it's actually better to just walk forward and try to parry. Uh, you will not be pushed back as much. Now, another key information that you need to know about this is you can absolutely perfect parry projectiles. Notice here, this was a perfect parry. There is like a sound cue, obviously. Right? But there is no screen freeze. Now, what you may not know about this is that you can actually punish. What you can do is that you can option select this, right? Um, for example, here with Manon, from this distance, if I happen to perfect parry a fireball, I can actually sweep punish Ryu. And notice my aimbus, right? I'm doing the uh, parry and then immediately doing sweep. If I happen to block the fireball and get a regular parry, I will be in the parry animation. Nothing comes out. If I happen to get the perfect parry, I get the punish. Right, this is really really good, and I've only seen like ending walker do really well with this. But it's something that I feel like people uh, might actually improve with over time. Uh, maybe because uh, when you're using characters like Ryu or Manon, uh, you're gonna try to like squeeze as much out of the game as possible. But yeah, this is good, something that you pretty much can do all the time. Notice here, I was doing it every time. Uh, you're not obviously gonna perfect bury every fireball, but if you do, this is good. Like you can always get a puffer, obviously matchup dependent, and you should know like from which ranges you can punish what. But this is good stuff, especially against zoning fireballs like reuse, look, etc. If you have enjoyed this video, please leave a like or a comment, it helps the channel so much. I will be leaving a link to the Patreon, Discord, Twitter, and Twitch pages in the description. Thank you so much for watching and stay safe.